Okay, so I'm going to do this example on dimensional analysis or unit analysis. Um, so here's the statement of the problem. Using only the following three quantities, so only these three quantities, the speed of light, Newton's gravitational constant, and Planck's constant, um, how can you combine these things together um, in such a way to create a formula which has um, dimensions of length, time, or mass? So this is a, an exercise in working with units, but it's also a very interesting problem because if you think about what a unit is, a meter is just something that humans made up, right? I mean, someone just created this measurement called a meter. On the other hand, the speed of light is a physical constant of nature. G is a, something physical about the universe and Planck's constant. These are all fundamental constants of nature. If you can combine them in such a way to make length, time, and mass, you have kind of what I would call nature's units or um, you might call them natural units. These are the units that in some sense nature prefers, right? Nature doesn't know anything about a meter. That's something that humans made up, but these things are um, um, sometimes called Planck units. Um, so very, very interesting from a physical standpoint, but uh, it's just an exercise. So to do this, for starting with part A, so we'll start with part A here, um, we want to uh, combine these three things together to have a formula with dimensions of length. So what that means is that the units of whatever this quantity is that I construct has to just be meters, right? So I need to get rid of the kilograms and the seconds squared, or the, sorry, the kilograms and the seconds from these quantities. So um, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do this um, kind of just by thinking about it for part A and part B. And then for part C, I'll show you a more systematic way of doing it. So if you're having trouble following my reasoning for parts A and B, you can skip to part C and you can see a sort of more systematic way of doing it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I need, need a quantity with dimensions of length. Um, or with units of meters. So I need to get rid of of uh, kilograms and seconds. So I note, if I stare at this for long enough, that kilograms only appears in uh, G and H bar. So if I'm going to use G and H bar, and I want the result to have no kilograms in it, I need to m combine G and H bar in such a way so the kilograms cancel out. And you can see it's not too hard to do that. Um, I just have to multiply H bar times G. So if I take this quantity, H bar times G, those square brackets mean the units of that. The units of H bar times G is going to be kilograms meters squared per second times uh, the units of G, which is meters cubed per kilograms times seconds squared. And you can see those kilograms cancel out, right? So that is units of meters to the fifth divided by seconds cubed. Okay? <clears throat> so I've gotten rid of my kilograms if I always use H bar and G together, just like that. Now I need to get rid of my seconds because I want a quantity which only has units of meters. So this one has seconds cubed in it. And then C, the speed of light, has seconds. So you can see that I can get rid of my seconds by uh, cubing C and dividing um, h bar g by C. So for example, um, to get rid of of the seconds, take um, h bar g over c cubed. I cubed it because I have seconds cubed in the denominator of h bar g, and I've got seconds in the denominator of c. So this has units. What are the units of this thing? It's uh, meters to the fifth over seconds cubed divided by the units of c cubed, which is meters per second cubed, right? which is uh, meters to the fifth seconds cubed times seconds cubed meters cubed. 
and you can see here that these seconds cancel out and I get meters squared. <clears throat> so this combination h bar g over c cubed has dimensions or units of meters squared. Now I want a quantity which has just units of meters so it seems pretty clear what I need to do now is I need to take the square root. So if I go take the square root h bar g over c cubed the units of that are meters cubed. Sorry, just meters, which is what I want, right? So this thing is the answer that we're after for part A. And this is sometimes called the Planck length. Um, it's a quantity made out of these three fundamental constants, um, which has units of length. And if you're curious, the numerical value of this LP is ridiculously small. Um, it's about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. So for some reason, this kind of fundamental length that nature prefers is ridiculously small compared to the lengths that we kind of experience on an everyday scale. All right, so I'm going to the next slide and do the rest of the problem. Okay, so now let's do part B. Part B is I'm trying to find a quantity with dimensions of time from these three. So I'm just writing the same thing that I had on the previous slide. I need to get rid of the kilogram, so we agreed that the best way to do that was to use this quantity h bar times g. Um, and so then I've got to work with these two quantities that I've written there um, to make something with dimensions of time. So I need to get rid of the meters here. So now you can kind of see what to do. To get rid of the meters, um, what I should do is take c to the fifth and divide these two, right? So h bar g over c to the fifth. What are the units of that? Meters to the fifth, seconds cubed, um, divided by c to the fifth. So if I divide by c to the fifth, I'm going to get seconds to the fifth divided by meters to the fifth. Right? And these things cancel, and I get seconds squared. Right. So now it seems like uh, to, if I want something which just has units of seconds, I just have to take the square root. So the units of this quantity, h bar g, over c to the fifth has units of seconds and this is sometimes called the Planck time so that's a quantity formed from those three fundamental constants which has units of time if you want to evaluate this numerically um, it's also ridiculously small the Planck time turns out to be 5.4 times 10 to the minus 44 seconds. So that's kind of um, very, very small time. Nature kind of chooses this really, really short time. Um, that's the kind of unit that nature would prefer to measure time in. Um, so anyway, we have our formula here for the Planck time. So now let me go to the next slide. Um, if you had some trouble understanding my reasoning, I'll show you a more systematic way of doing it for part C. Okay, so now let's do part C. Part C is the trickiest part. Um, I need to combine these three quantities in such a way so that I get a, form, a formula for something which has units of kilograms or dimensions of mass. So in the previous two parts, I was able to kind of just reason it out by thinking about it. Um, but maybe if you have trouble with that, I can show you a more systematic way of doing it. So what we're doing is we're multiplying and dividing these constants and raising them to powers. And I need to multiply and divide them and raise them to powers in such a way so that the units of the combination has units of mass. So I'm going to write a general formula here. I'm going to write a uh, general formula. It's going to take C to some power. Let me call it alpha. Um, G to some other power, beta and h bar to some other power gamma. So that's a general combination of these three um, constants, right? Raised to some power, alpha, beta, and gamma, which I'm going to find out. I don't know those powers right now, but that's what I'm trying to find. 
the units of this needs to be kilograms. Um, and just to be clear, I mean kilograms to the one, right? So just one power. So now let's figure out what the units of this, this general combination are. What's the units of C to the alpha? Well, that's meters to the alpha over seconds to the alpha, right? Um, G to the beta has units of meters to the three beta over kilograms to the beta seconds to the two beta. And h bar to the gamma has units of kilograms to the gamma, meters to the two gamma over seconds to the gamma. This has to equal to kilograms, okay? <clears throat> all right, so let's clear it, clean it up a little bit. Let's combine all the meters together. So on the top, I've got meters to the alpha plus three beta plus two gamma. Um, and then I've got kilograms to the gamma minus beta, because there's a gamma on the top and a beta on the bottom. And then I've got seconds everywhere on the bottom, so maybe I'll just put them down here. Seconds to the alpha plus two beta plus gamma has to equal kilograms, okay? So in order for this to work, I need the meters to cancel out, meaning that I need the exponent of the meters has to be zero, the exponent of the seconds has to be zero, and the exponent of the kilograms has to match on both sides. So from this I get three equations. So let me go over here. From the exponent of the meters, I find that alpha plus three beta plus two gamma has to equal to zero. Um, so that will mean that my meters will cancel out. So let me call this equation one. Equation two, I've got alpha plus two beta plus gamma has to also equal to zero. That's the equation from the seconds, x1, that my seconds need to cancel out. And then for my kilograms, I need gamma minus beta has to be equal to one. That tells me that the exponents of the kilograms are gonna match on both sides. Okay, so now I have three equations. I have three unknowns. I have to just determine those equations, those uh, unknowns, right? <clears throat> okay. So at this point, the problem is a math problem. Um, but maybe what I'll do is I'll just walk you through the math problem. Maybe what I'll do first is I'll take equation one minus equation two. What does that give me? Um, that's going to cancel out those alphas. I'm going to get beta plus gamma is equal to zero, which tells me that gamma, beta is equal to minus gamma. <clears throat> and then I will substitute at sub that in to three. So I get gamma minus beta, but beta is minus gamma, so that's minus gamma is equal to one. So I get gamma is one half. And then from what I had above, I get beta is minus a half, okay? Okay. Um, so maybe let me go to the next slide and I'll finish the problem. Okay, just to finish up this problem, we had derived these three equations here um, by setting up a formula for a general combination of h bar c and g and requiring that the units um, match the units of kilograms on the right hand side. So we're trying to solve those three equations for those three unknowns. We're able to solve for gamma and beta on the previous slide. To get alpha, I just have to plug into one of those, either one or two, so maybe I'll take equation number two. I get alpha plus two beta, which is minus one, or two times minus a half is minus one, plus gamma, which is a half, equals to zero, <clears throat> which tells me that alpha is equal to a half. Right? So I've got alpha equals to one half, gamma is equal to one half, and beta is equal to minus one half. So my general formula 
for a quantity which has the units of kilograms is uh, c to the alpha, which is one half, uh, g to the minus one half, uh, h bar to the one half. This has units of kilograms. And if you want to make this look a little prettier, those one halves are the same as square roots. We have uh, h bar c over g. And this thing is called the Planck mass. Um, and so that's the quantity that we were after in this problem, something which combining those three constants together in this way gives me something which has mass, a unit of mass. And if you want to plug in the numbers to this, you find that the units, or sorry, that the numerical value of the Planck mass is uh, not so ridiculously small as the Planck time and the Planck length. It's um, about 2.2 times 10 to the minus 8 kilograms. So it's a few, what is that, micrograms. Um, it's a bit small, I mean, but it's something that, you know, a grain of sand or something is not that much bigger than the Planck mass. So anyway, those, uh, this more systematic way of, of writing an equation, general equation with exponents and solving for those exponents, that could be done for parts A and B as well, um, uh, or any kind of other general problem where you're trying to combine constants together in a certain way. So I hope this problem has been useful for you in uh, working with units.